Hi everybody, and thanks for joining me today. So today is the session a lot of you have been uh, eagerly waiting for. Uh, this is the day we are going to finish this uh, massive project. Uh, I counted it up yesterday and I believe I have 16 colors left and exactly 200 stitches to go. So we are going to finish this today. Don't worry, I don't have any intention of uh, stopping making videos for you guys. You will see, I will be starting a new project. And you'll see that from the beginning as well. So. Yeah, I said in my monthly update video, you know, I'll see you back here January, but I meant for an update video, I'm still gonna be making you guys the, uh, the regular Stitch With Me videos throughout the month. I don't have any plans to stop doing that anytime soon, so. All right, just tucking my ends back towards the center here because I don't want them protruding past the edge of the design, so. Yeah, I find at the edges it takes a little longer because I don't use pin stitches because I don't want to risk that showing through, so. All right, so that is another color done. All right, and on to another. If I could manage to uh, thread, that is. I think all of my colors now have less than a, a hundred stitches left because, like I said, I only had uh, 200 in total here, so yeah, most of them are like under 10 stitches <laughs> left. This is one of the few that still has quite a lot in comparison to the others. would have finished this a few days ago but um I know you guys wanted to see the ending on camera so I put it aside till my regular filming day because uh yeah I prefer to film when no one's in the house I do I will do um filming when other people are around but if I have a choice I prefer to do it when I'm alone so which is kind of Strange, really, since I don't mind doing this publicly, but I don't know. I don't like doing it in front of people publicly. <laughs> we all have our weird little quirks, right? Okay. still going to do my not closing stuff in even though we're so close to the end but I'm going to be methodical and stick with it yeah like I say it's it I find it a little bit neater I did some work on um Firefly my 18 count piece and I discovered that yeah um the uh, not leaving gaps is even more helpful for me when it's a higher count as it's harder to uh get between the uh already done stitches. Yeah, we'll see how I feel after I finish a whole project with 18 count, but I think 14 is going to remain my preferred, preferred count. It's just what I'm most used to. And I don't mind, I have a fair amount of wall space, so... Yeah, I finally bought one of those uh, digital picture frames. So I haven't set it up yet, but I will eventually 
get our photos on it and then that way I can take down some of the framed ones and have more uh, space for cross stitch projects. Although I also really need to get a, um, a negative scanner because uh, yeah, I'm old enough that we still used film. And so I have quite a lot of non-digitized stuff that I would like to, uh, I would like to get finally digitized. Just haven't gotten around to it, so. Yeah, I've been kind of watching and seeing if there are any holiday sales on those because I managed to get the, excuse me, the digital photo frame on sale. It was a third off, so. That was really nice. Okay, and that's another color that is done. I love watching those zeros appear. So yeah, if I pull out my thread list here, you can see how many of these are zeros or just, you know, one, there's a four, there's one with three, so yeah. Yeah, I also had a request for a video about how I get everything together for a new project. So I will do a quick little video showing you all that. And also how I remove these uh, grid lines, since I don't do it until the end. But it's pretty simple. A little tedious, but that's all right. Like I've said, yeah, gritting takes some time in the beginning and removing it, but it saves me time in the end because uh, I make fewer mistakes. And when I do make mistakes, it is easier to correct them when I have uh, landmarks to count from that aren't dependent on other stitches. Because yeah, I've done that before and then I stitched one wrong and I based a bunch of other stitches around it wrong and it was so hard to find where I made the mistake. Yeah, when I park, I try to go from the uh, grids and not based on other stitches because, yeah. But, I mean, sometimes I get lazy and I do. And then, yeah, if I made a mistake, then that is a bit of a tangle to undo. Oh, <laughs> I said tangle and I uh, jinxed myself there. Huh. little pieces. Yeah, so we just finished watching, um, 1883, which is a, um, the Yellowstone prequel, it was so good. Yeah, if you like Westerns, I highly recommend it. It was, it was really well done. Done by the same creator of, as, of Yellowstone. And I was a little skeptical when I heard it was going to be starring Tim McGraw and Faith Hill because, you know, they're not actors, they're, they're country uh, singers. But uh, no, they did amazing. And uh, the whole thing was just incredible the work they put into it. So, I mean, they actually drove cattle for real. The um, the actors all had to go to cowboy camp, they they called it, and they had to learn how to uh, ride and rope and, and uh, herd cattle and, yeah. So they said they had to have them, you know, herd the cattle from one point to another, and if they lost any of them, they failed and had to do it again. So, uh, yeah, and that quality really shows and I was really impressed, like, 
even with the makeup, everybody looked dirty and sunburned and, and such, which is, you know, how you would look when you're out on the, uh, the trail, you know, for months at a time. Cause, uh, that's one of my pet peeves when you watch, um, apocalyptic movies and like the women all have hair that's, <clears throat> pardon me, obviously been blow dried, you know, and the guys are all perfectly clean shaven. And it's like, um, come on, you guys, when, uh, everything, you know, society has collapsed around you and you have limited access to water. I don't think getting, you know, perfectly clean, beautiful hair is going to be high on your list of priorities. So, uh, yeah. And they said all the, the costuming was made like by hand, you know, um, just for the show. They didn't go to a costume company and the detail was just, yeah, incredible. Yeah, it was funny after that because my husband says he doesn't generally like Westerns. And I was like, really? You could have fooled me, you know. Uh, but he said he liked that one. And I said, okay, but you watched all of Hell on Wheels with me and you liked that. And that was a Western, you know. I said, um, two of your favorite shows, our favorite shows, which are Firefly and Deep Space Nine, are basically Westerns in space, you know. So, yeah. Yeah, I, I love westerns. Yeah, it's harder to find um, historical romances with that setting. It used to be a really big popular genre, but I swear everything nowadays is Regency and Victorian. And while I do like those, reading about those eras, like... Uh, you know, I said it's like if you eat the same meal every night for a year, you'd get sick of it. Yeah. It's like I said, oh, I'm kind of getting sick of how many dukes there are in historical romances. Like, there are only about six of them, but I swear every single hero is a duke these days. Like, uh, like what was it? Um, there was a podcaster. She said, you know, if you laid all the dukes in um, historical romance end to end, they'd circle the earth four times or something, you know? <laughs> uh. Like I said, come on, one of the, you know, the most famous books of that, oh, wrong one, of that era, Pride and Prejudice, the hero is just a mister. You know, his he's the nephew to an earl, but he doesn't have a title of his own. Oh yeah, I guess that last color I finished, I can remove my uh, envelope. I had a second tub, so I'm moving all of them from one tub to the other as I finish. So at the end, it'll be empty. And after I complete this, I will um, take it off the, uh, the Q-snap and spread it out and show it to y'all. And eventually you'll see it when it's been all washed and ironed and mounted and hanging up. I won't promise when that's coming, but it is coming. <laughs> okay, so that was another one. $37.99. Done. Yeah, this is this is my favorite part when it's just like zero, 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 one after the other. Especially when it's like this color, there was a lot of it in this pattern. I think there was like oh, over 10,000 stitches of this color, this 823, so. 
definitely feels like an accomplishment to have that done. Make sure that thread actually goes inside the envelope. Okay, and zero. Yeah, so when I was stitching on the 18 count yesterday, I discovered I was able to, I was splitting the fabric a lot more. But maybe by the time I get to the end of the project, I'll be used to it enough. That won't be as much of a problem. We'll see. But yeah, like I've said, I have a whole, I bought a whole bolt of 14 count and I still have almost half of it left. So I will probably be using that anyway because I don't want to waste it. Way too fuzzy to thread easily, so we will trim it. Yeah, so uh, the uh, rabbit came back to our yard and we could see its tracks in the snow. They can jump quite far when they want to because uh, the drift was quite big. And uh, yeah, to get over it, he had to jump quite high. Yeah, and saw him the other day. He's totally white now. So he can blend in with the snow. Yeah, we don't know if it's the same one because I've seen three or four of them at a time around our house. So it could be, you know, different ones or if it's the same one. But uh, yeah. We have a little bit of an overhang from our uh, our front window. So they like to, to uh, hide under there. Especially in the summer because uh, it grows a lot of, a lot of uh, weeds under there and they like to eat them. Ooh. Yeah, it's hard to keep up. We have, um, like, uh, we covered it with those uh, rocks, you know, uh, gravel or whatever, terracotta-looking colored pieces of gravel. And uh, it still grows so much weeds under there. I said, why is it when I want to grow something, it doesn't grow? But, you know, the stuff you don't want to grow, it's hard to keep up, so... Yeah, I use vinegar and salt to, to deal with those weeds so it's not toxic. 
But yeah, I said salting the earth isn't as doesn't seem to do as much as you would think because they still keep growing back. I have to treat it more than once a year and uh, every year they come back. So so maybe I'm not using enough, but uh, yeah, it was just a little recipe I found online. That, uh, it's like a gallon of vinegar and then like three cups of salt mixed in. And you can either spray it or just, I have a watering can and just kind of pour it on the, on the uh, weeds, making sure, of course, it doesn't get on my grass. <clears throat> yeah, and if it, um, it hits the pavement, it actually bleaches the pavement a bit. So, like, man, those weeds are really determined and hardy because they keep, uh, they keep coming back. Okay, so I'm going to carry this one up a bit and then back down. So you can see I'm at 99.93. The counter may actually hit 100 before I'm actually completely done. When you have a project with a lot of stitches, that can happen sometimes because there's a bigger margin of error. So, yeah, I had that happen with my last project, which was like... It was a bit bigger. I think it was like 275,000, something like that. And, yeah, it hit... 100% about 200 stitches from the end, so we'll see. This one has a different, <clears throat> has a bit less, so we'll see, but. So you know it's really done when the, uh, the first number stitched ma matches the total number of stitches. Okay, 932. Yeah, and it was funny, when I was going through my envelopes, I discovered I'd pulled a color number that wasn't even in my pattern by accident. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. I don't know why. I guess I misread it. Although I remember a few months back, I was going through and I was missing a color, so it must have been one that was close to that color and was off by, like, one digit, and I grabbed the wrong one. Yeah, I must have, like, transposed the numbers or something. It was like instead of three eight four six, it was three eight four eight or something. So, yeah, they were close, and I mixed them up. It's a good thing I wasn't traveling or something and didn't have it with me. It's just a case of having to get off my behind and go down to my uh, master set. Okay, so I looks like. Oh, no, I have two threads coming from each direction. Okay, I thought maybe I'd have to do one out of order, but I don't. Occasionally that happens. If you've been uh, a regular watching my videos, you'll have seen that. Sometimes I do go out of order when it just makes sense for me to do so. And it's more trouble to avoid closing stuff in than that's what I do. And especially I find that often happens more when I already have multiple threads and I really don't want to add another because I don't need another. So yeah, occasionally I will break my own guidelines. Yeah, so we're supposed to have another cold snap tomorrow, but then after that it's supposed to warm up, so that's good. 
<clears throat> yeah, we had a few very cold days with some extreme cold warnings. Yeah, and luckily my husband did a decent job on the attic, so we didn't have any moisture up there because we had a an issue when we replaced our windows with um, high energy efficient ones. Suddenly we started noticing dripping coming down around the from the ceiling around the edges and stuff and it turned out it was what they call attic rain which is basically all that um moisture and stuff goes up into the attic which is often less insulated it has to go somewhere and then f and then it gets cold and it forms ice in there and then the ice melts and it drips and it can cause water damage so yeah that was something nobody warned us about we found it out ourselves but thankfully we discovered it in time and my husband in the summer, he went up and uh, like moved all the um, insulation aside and sealed it all up perfectly every little bit. And then he put some extra vents and uh, an attic fan in there. And uh, yeah, it stayed nice and dry. So, phew. Because <laughs> yeah, you do not want to have a water damaged attic. That is a lot of trouble. You can end up with a leaky roof and mold and... Yeah, it is not good. And again, that's another, so glad my husband's handy because to pay somebody to do that is at least five grand. So, yeah. So yeah, he took a couple of uh, weeks off in the summer and he did that. So I kind of felt bad. This was a couple years ago. Like that's your summer vacation, right? Okay. So yeah, I could be tempted to skip out of order here and do these. All of these three but I'm not gonna I don't want the uh, corner looking messier than the rest of the uh, the piece so Yeah, my last piece, I, um, I wasn't, um, I didn't have my YouTube channel started yet. So I took a picture in the morning that I finished it and, uh, showing the progress and said, do you think I can finish today? And I had people, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, I'm going to be stalking your page. <laughs> my friends, yeah. So they said, I'm so invested in this project now from seeing your updates. Yeah, I still did a little bit of skipping around in that one. It's sort of this project that I really perfected my um, my parking method that I do now. Not done yet, but will be soon. But I didn't have that one out in my tray, so. few people saying that when they get to the end they're too excited to finish to be orderly but I'm going to restrain myself. <laughs> mm. Okay, back up to the top for a bit. Wasn't sure if that was a loose 
Some of these little trimmed bits can get stuck, but no, that's an end from the other side. There we go. <clears throat> Sometimes I kind of like to uh, <clears throat> look for the ones that only have one stitch left so I can get them done sooner. <laughs> Still without going out of order though. So my next project has a lot of colors. <clears throat> I think it's like 120 instead of like this one's 81. I usually do around 82, <clears throat> 90 colors in a pattern. But uh, as it's a smaller pattern, there we go. as I've said, only 48,000 stitches, uh, a lot of them will be done very quickly. We should get zeros, yeah, fairly soon. Okay, and another one done. Probably could have picked a longer thread, but oh well. <laughs> we'll just add another. Because I think the one I have parked there is not terribly long. No, it's not. Okay. come up neatly so I'll go down through that spot then.
Okay, right, I have two here, so let's just take a look. So that one, it's pretty long. This one will go, okay, I see what I'm gonna do with these. Yeah, after working on 18 count for a couple of days, I can think, think I can safely say I won't be going any any higher in count. <laughs> I really admire people who work on the super high counts. I saw someone saying they work on 40 count. They don't even really have to secure their ends because um, when the thread fills the holes, it kind of can't, you can't pull it out. It gets that crowded because it's such a teeny tiny little count. It's like, wow. <laughs> yeah. My eyesight wouldn't like it. If I have to use magnifiers, I don't want to. Yeah, it was funny because there was one lady who said her husband asked why are you wearing those magnifiers you know and she said well so i can see the holes in the fabric and he looks he says there aren't any holes in the fabric it's like yes honey exactly you cannot see them that is why i need the magnifiers <laughs> there are holes in the fabric dude they're just so teeny tiny you cannot see them with the naked eye <sighs> <sighs> or one who said her uh, husband got interested and he wanted to try it. And she said, oh, yeah, I keep a little, you know, clean um, mascara wand so that when you make mistakes and have to rip it, you can just brush the, the fuzzies off. And he says, I'm not going to make mistakes like, oh, yes, honey, sure. Sure you're not. <laughs> uh, the confidence of a beginner. <laughs>
Okay, I wasn't sure if this would be long enough for one more stitch, but I think it is. And then I'll just add a new thread for the last few that are over there. Yeah. Okay, another zero. Woohoo. And another. Yeah, like I've said, this is always my favorite part. Okay, we are almost halfway through because like I said, I had 200 stitches left. I've done 96. So after that mark, we'll be halfway there through this session. Oops. Oh, that didn't sound good. There we go. Oh, no. What's going on here? Why are you being like that? Is there not a very tiny one? Hmm. I hate when it does that. be on this side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just pin stitch it over here and then come back. That way the knot is definitely on the wrong side and it's a very tiny one so it shouldn't make a lump. That way I didn't have to end off my thread and restart. Okay. Although, speaking of ending off threads, this one will be ended off, and then I'll have to start another. Oh, you are just not going to cooperate, are you? You know, let's see how long again this one is here.
Okay, yeah, two threads will be fine because the one that I have attached is not going to be long enough to do all of this color of stitches, so I would need another thread anyway, so I'll just attach it now. Sorry, that fridge is being really loud today. It's either the fridge or my my water machine. Rather annoying. Hopefully you're not hearing it. Uh, drives me nuts. thinking for Christmas I may um, treat myself to uh, a crafting light, one of the Ot lamps, because uh, yeah, at this time of the year we don't get as much natural light. And uh, when the sun goes down it's harder to see, especially because the um, bulbs I have are kind of yellowish, so they kind of change the color of the, of the, um, the threads. And I was doing some research on the Ot lights and they say that one of their big selling features is that the colors are true to life. So, and they're designed to not cause eye strain. So that may be what I will do. We'll see. Because yeah, I find it certain times of the day, even with how lights on the house in, when it's sort of like twilight outside, it's really hard to see my stitching and I don't want to give myself eye strain so <clears throat> yeah on some nights like when my husband goes to teach the radio class I end up with the house to myself and I'd like to stitch some more but the lighting is not not good enough I don't want to be hurting my eyes or getting a headache so And then this one, I remember, it's just long enough, yeah, for one stitch. Ah, I left it threaded, but could not <laughs> get it out of there without unthreading it. Yeah, a lot of times I won't even bother leaving them threaded when they're that short.
80 stitches to go. I'm like this when I read to, at least when I read paper books, I would find out exactly what page the story ended on. And then like when I got to 100 pages left, it'd be obsessively counting down. Okay, there's 90 pages left. Okay, there's 80 pages left. I'm like, I don't know why I do this. And it was funny because I mentioned it on a forum, people were talking about, you know, weird reading habits you have. And I said that, and I had a bunch of people said, oh, I do that too. I said, oh, good. So it's not just me. <laughs> I don't really do it on um, eBooks though. Well, I guess also because the, um, the e-reader e has a percentage done. So it does all that math for you, right? The only thing that's uh, kind of frustrating is when they have extra stuff in the book like a preview of the next book or something so you think that there's still a whole bunch left and then the story ends sooner than you expected yeah that kind of frustrates me yeah i had one i read recently it was a paper book and um it was uh jennifer mcquinston High her highland fling i think it was called and um yeah i didn't realize that the book was basically a novella and the second half of the book was all previews for different authors who uh, wrote for the same publisher. So, yeah, I wasn't expecting the story to end that quickly. Okay. See how much we get out of this thread. Could just... Yeah, so it's nice. Our uh, neighbors, they uh, gave us some barbecue the other day as a thanks for the um, banana bread we gave them. They barbecue a lot. So even though it's really cold, they um, they put it right against, right up to the uh, edge of their um, garage and have the garage door open and the barbecue like that. <laughs> wow, they're more dedicated than me. When it's that cold, I'm not doing that. <laughs> but yeah, so they brought some over. It was really nice. It's good when you can have a nice, a good relationship with your neighbors, right? Yeah, well, we have the uh, people next door to us that uh, came over and said hi when we first moved in, and we're still friends with them. So and that's holy cow, 16 years later. I can't believe it's been that long. <laughs> okay, I think I will need one more thread for the one stitch that's sort of over there in the edge. A lot of live needles on threads here, but that's okay. I don't think I've had to do any out of order on this session yet. We shall see. Yeah, and I'll also put a picture on my Insta. It's done as well. And you can follow me on there for more because uh, there will be also pictures when it is finished, finished, when it's uh, ironed and washed and all the rest not just the stitching done. Yeah, it was funny. I had one of my friends who said, you actually finish your stuff. That's unnatural. <laughs> I said, yeah, but then I had projects that sat there. I had one that sat in my closet for 10 years before I finally finished it. <laughs> so yeah, I had people say like, um, should you loosen your, your hoop or cue snaps? And you can. But I also tell them I left that project in a hoop for a decade. And uh, once it was washed and ironed, it was fine. So, and uh, yeah, one of my friends said same thing. Her mom gave her an old project that had been sitting in the closet for who knows how long in a hoop. And uh, yeah, she finished it and it was okay. But yeah, she said um, after stitching with uh, an app with the Pattern Keeper, she stitching with paper felt so much slower and more cumbersome. It's like, how did I do this before? You know, we got spoiled because I stitched, uh, oh, let's see, three full coverage projects with um, paper highlighters. 
before I switched to um, Pattern Keeper. Yeah, and like one page of like another one. That was when I got the uh, Pattern Keeper app. It was after the first page was pretty much done. Yeah, now I'm not sure if I would be willing to uh, to stitch a pattern without it. Definitely not a big one. Yeah, there was when I bought my Ocarina of Time one off of Etsy and I didn't know if it was going to work on uh, Pattern Keeper. So I was just kind of fingers crossed and I thought that if it's not, maybe I won't do it. We'll see. But thankfully it did. I had to enter in the, um, the uh, thread numbers manually. So that took like an hour because there's quite a few colors and uh but i mean after that now it works full searchability and everything so totally worth it actually i think i can get the very last stitch out of this thread and not have to add another so that is what i'll do i won't leave it threaded though because it's not going to stay i can tell that right now So I may end up doing something out of order here. We will see. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to skip one. So I said I hadn't, but then see, I jinxed myself. <laughs> <clears throat> but yeah, this thread is long enough to do all of them, and I just... Don't feel like adding an extra thread for just this one stitch down here or carrying it down here and then carrying a way long carry back up. So that is why I'm doing it this way. Like I've said, these are guidelines, not hard and fast rules. No stitching police, just do however works for you. And woohoo, another zero pretty soon. All right, 51 left. Oh dear, sorry about that. <laughs> Had a remote there on the uh, arm of the couch next to me and it fell down. You had someone call my stitching spot, my, uh, my stitching nest, which I thought, yeah, that's actually a pretty fitting name for it. It is kind of a nest since I have the pillows next to me for my arm and the other arm of the couch on the other side and pillows behind me. It is kind of a little, a little nest. <laughs> but yeah, got to be comfortable, especially if you're going to be doing this for extended periods.
Okay, another one that we can finish off. for this color went. It's not in the right order here. Oh, yeah, got refiled out of order. That's what happened. Okay, so I was thinking it should be here. <laughs> I've been using it the whole project, so uh, yeah, it was there. I just accidentally put it back into my tub in the wrong spot. Done. Oh, so close. Oh, 99.99. We are so, so close. Mm. 
Another done. Woohoo, this is so much fun. Okay. Oh, I did that too many stitches out. Whoops. Yeah, I did this four stitches out when it should be three. My mistake. Try that again. <laughs> spread these apart so they don't tangle. One of my um, magnets is a little stronger than the others, so the needle sticks to it a little harder, and I'm more likely to unthread my uh, unthread it then when I'm trying to pull it free.
oops, sorry, gotta rearrange here. Get myself a little more comfy. Okay, there we go. Yeah, I gotta change positions every so often. So I don't get cramped up, just plain uncomfortable. I'm gonna do this one because then I can mark it done. <laughs> then it will be another zero. I mean, it really doesn't matter. I'm so close to the end, but yeah, I'm weird that way. Oh yeah, you can see my counter on my app went over to a hundred already, even though I still have like 11 stitches to go. Yeah, there's just, like I said, especially when you get into a pattern which has a lot of stitches, it's a higher margin of error for the counter. So it can be off a little bit. So yeah, I still have 10 stitches to go, but it says I'm completely done, but I'm not quite. Still, 10 stitch, you know, 10, 11 stitch margin of error. That's not bad, considering. I think they'd have to go to like thousandth of a percentage point to avoid that, and that's a lot of, whoops, don't want that happening. Got the needle wants to, sometimes, there we go. Sometimes pushing this along the back from the front side and not looking can be, a little tricky. Mm. You have to be careful your needle doesn't come through to the right side or the thread will come through to the right side and that will not look right.
Okay, so there we have it, the very last stitch. Woohoo! Drum roll. <laughs> Tie it off. So there we go, 224, 950 out of 224, 950, it is finished. So um, thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, this was so exciting and I'm so glad I got to share this with you all. Um, I will also take this off the frame and uh, show it to you all in its entirety, all spread out. And uh, my next session will be starting a brand new project. So um, thank you so much for joining me today. I'm so honored that you uh, chose to go on this journey with me. And I hope to see you back here the next time. All right, thanks everyone. Bye. So there it is, all finished. Just give you guys kind of a detail zoom in here. So I still have to wash it and iron it and remove these grid lines. There you go, that is the completed project.